Hi, this video looks at Lewin's force field analysis. Uh, it's a method of managing change that's listed on the specification uh, right here in 3.10.1. And so uh, we could define Lewis's, Lewin's force field analysis as a model that identifies and gives a weighting to the significance of the forces for and against a particular change. Uh, so here's a picture of Kurt Lewin was the name of the guy who identified this model. And it basically considers the driving force field for a change against the restraining force field. And because it identifies and gives a weighting to each driving and restraining force field, we can then um, consider whether that change will go ahead or not uh, based on the strength of the driving and restraining force field. If the um, restraining force fields outweigh the driving force field then that change will not go ahead because the factors restraining that change from happening are stronger than the factors driving it. So maybe let's have a look at an example to kind of bring this home a little bit. So this is a relatively recent uh, headline from the BBC website about thousands of jobs uh, being at risk at Sainsbury's. It's basically a story about the restructuring of the workforce at Sainsbury's, restructuring some of the management, delayering, taking out a layer of management in order to cut costs. You can have a look at the article if you want, if you just do a Google search for that, <coughs> you'll find the article. But some of these are some of the forces for uh, that change. Well, the high levels of competition that Sainsbury's are facing, uh, particularly from the d discounters, means that Sainsbury's are uh, struggling to maintain profit margins, especially when combined with a couple of other things. Uh, they're having to keep their prices very low uh, because if they don't keep their prices low, A, well, people will go to other supermarkets, a very competitive industry, but the uh, a huge issue in the supermarket industry has been the emergence of the discounters, Audi and Lidl, who have really put the big four supermarkets, kind of uh, created a whole extra load of competition for them that's based on price. And consumers have proven to be very price sensitive over recent years after the uh, global financial crisis of 2008. So looking to give that a weighting, well, this is quite a serious issue for Sainsbury's. Uh, this is going to be around for a long time. So I would give this a five uh, out of five. This is a strong force that could be um, uh, pushing for this change. In addition to that, uh, we've got the increased costs of imported food. Now, Sainsbury's are having to pay a lot more to import food because of the weakness of the of sterling following the Brexit vote. The value of sterling has fallen and that makes imports far more expensive. But because of the high levels of competition from the discounters, Sainsbury's are having trouble passing on that extra cost to consumers. So they're having to maintain very low prices. In other words, their revenue is staying uh, fairly constant, but their costs are rising, which is eating into profit margins. Now, let's, uh, and, and that means they're looking to cut costs by de restructuring the workforce. So they can't uh, cut the cost of the food they're importing, that's, that's set. They need to find other ways of making efficiencies and they're trying to do that through the workforce. Well, let's give that a three, because although it's an important issue, that issue will eventually uh, resolve itself, it's not permanent, uh, and the value of sterling is indeed picking back up as I speak in February 2018. Um, so I've given that a three uh, as a, a force for change. Um, final issue is changing shopping habits. So around 10 years ago, all the supermarkets had these huge out of town shopping, uh, you know, big, Tesco extra type shops that people went out of town to shop in. More recently, consumers have moved to uh, shopping online for the big bulky items and uh, dropping into convenience store type shops for, for a daily shop. It's a very different way of shopping. And uh, this means that Sainsbury's need to respond to that. Uh, they don't need the workforce in the big out of town shopping centres anymore. Maybe they need a mobile manager who can sort of go across three or four of these convenience stores that might be quite close together in a town. So uh, it's a force that's, re that, that's driving the workforce. It seems to be one that will be relatively long term, so I've given it a four. Now, in terms of um, 
And that, we can add them up and that gives a total score of 12 for forces for a change. In terms of forces against, uh, well, there are unions and uh, some members of Sainsbury's are member of, members of unions. And unions are very concerned about this sort of uh, change to working practices where um, Sainsbury's have said they're not actually going to lose any staff, but managers will either be promoted to a role with more responsibility or they'll go to, to the tier below. And unions would be very concerned about that. Um, they don't like it when people uh, lose their pay. Um, so I've given that a four. Not everyone at Sainsbury's is a member of a union. And maybe if it's only the management who are affected, some shop floor staff may not be as worried as they would be if it was their own jobs at risk. Secondly, we might have a different assessment of the situation. I'm speaking in February 2018. Sainsbury's had a relatively good Christmas in 2017. So... You know, staff might be feeling good for that and then suddenly they're being told that they're losing their job. So they might not understand why, the reasons why that that's happening. They've got a different assessment of the situation. Well, I've given that a three um, with the argument that maybe we'll be able to talk staff around and identify that, you know, there is indeed huge levels of competition in the move to online shopping. Um, and maybe some staff will understand the reasons for the change. So uh, I've given that a three. Final one, uh, customer resistance. Customers um, might be concerned when they hear that uh, you know uh, there are going to be changes to the staff, um, particularly vulnerable customers or customers that, that, that have questions to ask. Um, so there might be customer resistance to a change. I've given that a two because you know these are manager type roles. The main employees that customers. Uh, interact with the shop floor staff and this isn't a change that's going to affect the stop shop floor staff so that I believe is less important which gives a total score of nine now these are just uh, figures that I've plucked out of the air it doesn't mean that I am in favor of job losses at Sainsbury's it's just that given the relative forces for and against change it looks like this is a change that will go ahead because the the forces for the change are greater than the forces against the change and therefore those forces for change will be able to overpower the ones against. So why is this a useful model to use? Well it's used to consider the reasons for and against change and just identify those. Um, we can then can weigh up the relative significance of each force which is going to be very useful for a management team that's looking to maybe push through a change. Um, we can assess whether or not that change should take place or not, or will take place. Um, you know, we can, um, it's a useful model to consider if this change will happen or not, and if we can push it through, uh, given the forces for and against change. And we could consider the strategies that could be used to promote or resist a change. So, in other words, if I'm uh, part of the same board trying to push through a change, I could think about ways I could overcome that um, different assessment of the situation that employees have. Or if I'm a member of the union, I might look at, you know, the uh, weakness of sterling as a reason for doing this and say, well, hang on a sec, look at what's happening to the value of sterling. That's, that's not going to hang around and we should hold on to these jobs. So um, we can consider the strategies used to promote or resist the change. So evaluating. Um, you know, obviously this is a vast simplification of reality, you know, what could be a very difficult situation um, and we're, we're simplifying it, we're saying this is the force and, and, and we're just putting a, a number on it. It's very subjective, that number, all right, and it relies on having perfect information, it relies on the data we're putting into this model. So, um, lots of ways that we could criticize this model but does that mean it's totally useless well i believe it is useful to consider the strongest arguments for and against a change and just to identify those uh, arguments if you, you know if i'm making a strategic change i need to simplify reality in order to identify those key things that i will be looking at otherwise the situation is just too complex um, and it could be used for me to, if i'm a management team and i want to push through a change i could use to I can use it to assess how to overcome any resistance to the change. On the other hand, if I'm against the change, I might look at what the strongest argument for the change is, and I can start to think about 
argument I could use to counter that and therefore build my case against this change.